Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So it's an honor to be in this elite forum today. And it, we had a, a, a couple of sessions. The last couple of sessions were really, really mind-boggling, where I'm, I'm really happy to hear, because I've been a technologist at heart since the start of my career. And there is another commonality. So I've been working with the CFO's office for quite long from a technology perspective. So I, I've really seen the transformation pre-GST, GST, and how technology is taking space. So while I heard the eminent speakers, uh, Mr. Arun and, uh, uh, and few other people, about how technology is going to be an aid, so along with growth, I'm going to add an additional parameters for our consideration in this room today. It's going to be compliance. Yes, the compliance is really changing across the globe. And we are talking about growth. Anything from India to abroad is going to be a phenomenal growth. And we'll also unlock a few numbers, which will be mind-boggling equally here. So I'll take you to a, a short tour across the globe. I promise you don't really require a visa for this. I'll, I'll ensure that you know, we'll keep it short and sweet, so probably an aerial tour equally. How many of you in this room sell into the US? If I can have a raise of hands for a minute, please. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> All right. So the reason why I've asked about US is simple. And probably the second question. How many of you in this room think India GST is complex, complicated, and, and seriously, you know, it's, it's a pain? Okay, very few hands, really good. Had this been a presentation before 2017, I would have seen the entire room full with raise of the hands because we had service tax and everything, right? When we talk about the US part of it, so US has multiple taxes. So we all think it's the beautiful West, but unfortunately from a tax compliance world, it is the wild West. So US has multiple taxations whether it is sales and use tax, whether you are telling, uh, selling any kind of an you know, OTT platforms, there's a different taxation. For property, there is a separate taxation. And for beverage and alcohol, a retail brand which is selling a beverage or even an alcohol brand, they have a separate tax and multiple scenarios. So US has about 15,000 tax change, um, jurisdictions across the country. And can you even have a a guess, a quick guess about how many tax changes U.S. would experience in a year. Just, I'll, I'll take two to three numbers. Hundred, okay. Two more, please. Just a random number, no problem. Sorry. Five, okay. One more. Two hundred, okay, great. So I'm going to unveil the number of what happened in 2022 from a tax change perspective. In 2022 alone, the entire United States experienced, along with Canada, I'm also clubbing Canada for a better geography, that's the number of taxability updates happened in US and Canada. And if we compare with India, India had around there were circulars, again published by our GST Council, for about 4,500 in 2022. So now I think my statement of Wild West makes sense, right? So there are, again, holiday updates. Like, you know, you will have a tax holiday for six days, one week, two weeks, and even three weeks, depending upon the kind of products you're selling, and the region you're selling, and the jurisdiction you're selling. So it's a multi-level taxation. And I'm, I'm really, really happy that Indian GST adopted the Canadian GST system, though we initially considered the Brazilian thing, because Brazil has multiple levels of taxation. At least Canada has a two steps of taxation there. So from US, we will quickly turn into a little bit more into the European part of the world, where there are quite a lot of changes happening. And again, here India leads by example. So let me also remind you, when Indian e-invoicing is being announced, so the country which 
really, really, they started the, inv the investment towards e invoicing first was Poland. But if you really understand, even today Poland is not ready with e invoicing. They are planning to start in mid of 24. But while India, we just moved everything in a ZIF. You know, we are now in almost in the penultimate stage of our, our invoicing. I think the OSP after every successful phase, right? But now the entire European Union, after Brexit, they want to fill the VAT gap, which is about 139 billion euros. So they found the easiest way is they started with new shipment policies, which is more like you know, the IOSs, import one-stop shop, if your shipment is less than 150 euros. And one-stop shop if you are trying to do move goods between within EU, from one, point, one country to the other into the EU. And now invoicing is the heart and the buzzword. Till last few weeks, France is all set to gear up to launch their first phase of invoicing in 23. We just again moved into 24. It is expected to move into 24. The dates are yet to be disclosed. So here is your, excuse me. All right. So these are various countries which are planning for invoicing upcoming in next few years from now. Asian countries, again, still focusing more on e-invoicing and et cetera. But I'll quickly turn my focus into one part of the discussion, which is your cross-border transaction. So if you really look into the entire world part of it, US is chaos as usual, so no change much of it. And the icing on the cake, US is considering e-invoice, gentlemen. So with 122,000 tax changes, that means all, almost we are expecting around 1,000, beyond 1,000 a week. And now they are piloting the e-invoicing because they just want to track the dollars in the right fashion. So EU, a known story of e-invoicing. Again, Asian e-invoicing. The only part of the world which was extremely successful with e-invoicing, apart from India, is South American continent. So Brazil, Chile, Colombia, and every one of them, they were successful. And they, in, in fact, they launched e-invoicing ahead of India, and they were successful. So I know like, you know, because out of my experience in dealing with quite a lot of retail brands, so the only reason why companies try and do cross-border, there is a, a, a good adage given by an, a French economist, if goods doesn't cross the border, the armies will. So similarly, so when there are quite a lot of cross-border transactions happening, and if you also look into it, India is one of the most contributing country from a cross-border uh, transactions across the globe. So it is also expected there is almost 2x growth rate when it comes to brands who are trying to do cross-border along with the domestic business. So I'm not really discounting the domestic business, whether it is online or offline modes. And there are imminent brands which are trying to do cross-border, not just in India, but also in abroad in the omni-channel phase as well. So we have a couple of brands sitting in this room as we speak. And the total value of the cross-border trade is estimated to be $7.9 trillion. This is the latest report, which is specific only to the B2C cross-borders. We are not really including the B2B orders in this case, ladies and gentlemen. So if you look into this, there are people who are currently selling, and this is again a latest data about how they are planning to sell in their next 12 months into the cross-border part of it. So majority of them are interested in cross-border. So the reason why we have a city like Jaipur has about 6,000 e-commerce sellers who are enrolled with Amazon and even eBay. And they do millions of transactions in right from, you know, from 1st of October till end of December, which is a combination of Navratri followed by Diwali and also the marriage season. But if you also look into it, there are equivalent kind of a problems the retailers face day in, day out, which we also did a little bit of research as a company. And we found some interesting parts in that one. I'll also give you the kind of potential pitfalls and the observations we had. So it definitely adds more to the complexity part of it. And the first one with the growth really picking up. The customs authorities, not just in India, but across the world, have turned their fees into 
into looking, uh, looking into the deeper parts of every transaction. And I was in discussion with one of the customs authority in uh, a, a couple of months back, and he was mentioning this, Krishna, it used to be a, a pain-taking FI for us to issue a notice earlier. So we used to do a lot of paperwork, like probably a day or two, run the file across. Now he says, like in, in less than five to six clicks, I can send a notice sitting in my office. So it is not an exaggeration. The government is far ahead from a technology standpoint than we businesses together. So they are tracking every part of it, right? From invoicing, your e-way bill, whether the vehicle moved out of it or not, with our, even with, with our latest GST trends. So about 51% are expecting to, to probably in a shop globally, and if you look into it, this calls in for a new edition of the HS code classification which came up in 2022. A small country like Bangladesh, we just increased their penalty for wrong HS code classification from 50,000 taka to almost 100,000 taka. It, this is a very recent resolution which they brought in. And we have six phases which is equally important. It is not just the HS code, but there are also other duties and taxes which are equally to be calculated. So here is again a, a small data uh, which talks about the kind of uh, potential pitfalls the, the companies will really experience day in, day out, whether it's the delay in shipments, customs, and wrong duty calculations. And I also heard one of our eminent panelists a moment ago talking about the customer experience. I will also tell you a couple of examples of retail brands and the way they try to address it. There, are, there, there is a famous retail brand, it's an apparel brand based out of West India, and they were selling into US. And apparently, their shipment, each shipment value is above $800, the de minimis. So apparently, they are having their kind of you know, duties and other things, etc. It is a wedding season, and one um, extravagant shopper really picked a couple of items, and they've shipped it. But eventually, they started experiencing a strong inclination in rejecting the goods. And it is becoming extremely a, a cost affair for people to... Uh, to honor their returns for this brand. So the CFO, with a couple of more indirect tax researchers and everything, they started digging into the data, and there is also a marketer as a part of this entire panel who did this. And the shocking truth they found is, when they are adding a product to the shopping cart, so the price is around, like let's say, $1,000. The $1,000 is added. The customer pays $1,000, and he is happy, and he is expecting a shipment just right to be delivered. But the company never determined the duties as a part of the shopping experience. So when the shipment is getting delivered, the DHL or the FedEx or the UPS, they have cleared the customs, and they were asking, hey, you need to pay me another $200 extra. And the customer were, they were a little rattled because of one reason, like, you know, I have paid $1,000, and I was under the assumption this happened. And this is a similar consequence faced by eBay in markets like Europe and even in, uh, in USA. And this nature of business by eBay and Amazon in European Union called for a new reform because there are quite a lot of products which are less than 10, 10 euros to around 25 euros which are piled up in various custom offices in, in across the EU. So one, it doesn't really make a point to bring them back into India by again paying the duty, bringing it back and experiencing your logistic cost. So the experience has to start from the moment of purchase. As a customer, everyone has a right to understand, like, you know, $1,000 is my product, here is another $150 or $200 is the kind of a duty, and eventually I paid $1,150, and when I get it, all I get is my product with, with it's, a, it's a seeming shopping experience. I need not really shell down any other dollar later. This is one part of it. And the second part of it, that's where the omni-channel coming into the play wherein you pay the entire taxes and everything when you are trying to do the shopping in India, and you pick it offline from a store which is there in the US. A one eminent jewelry brand is now spinning this off from India. You can pay everything in India, and probably you can pick it when you are visiting their store in California. So you are trying to give an experience, and customers opt in for experience. They, it is not every time the cost factor which 
Majority of the marketplaces and everything spin off, but it is equally the experience which matters. And I was also hearing our, our panelists talking about the kind of you know, data tracking shoes. It just stuck to me. Nike has already started this project where there is a, a small chip embossed into the, the sole of the shoe. It will talk about when you are running, what is the pressure you are applying on your right foot, on your left foot, and what is the kind of you know, mileage, what is the distance between the feet you are taking, and everything. So the technology is really, really changing the face of the world as we speak. And, oh, sorry, I'm having a little hard time with the, the slide runner. It's a little unusual. Apologies for that. And the customer rejecting shipments, like the way I've told you, this is the data which we, we also found out when we are talking to that customer. And this is literally, literally in line. You see 20%, it's a huge amount of shipments which are being rejected by the customer because they didn't really have a clear tax determination in place. And eventually the pressure is back on the CFO's office because where is the profitability coming from? And one main problem we found is the HS code classification. This is a problem faced from marketplaces, retail companies, manufacturing companies, anyone who are trying to trade goods in and out of India. So this is a sandal, as you everyone know. By the way, the, it is under the 64th chapter, so 640590, six-digit HS code. So we have, in India, India is more flexible. We use four-digit, six-digit, and eight-digit HS codes. But this product is being shipped into Australia. You have a 10-digit HS code. Again, in the United States, it's a 10-digit HS code. And in Japan, it is a nine-digit HS code. The same if it goes to Bolivia, it is a 12-digit HS code. So why it is important? By and large, we do only the six digit, and we just punch it on, and we send it, because this is how we operate. Like, I am sending an invoice. It's an export invoice. GST is zero, six digit, HS code, pass through, fine. But if you really look into it, here is the variance from a duty perspective. And I'll also show this to you in, in EU, where we talk about a bag and EU, entire EU has the same kind of an HS code classification. So you can use the same thing. But if you really look into it, if you use the only six digit, which is a, a music bag, a music case in one scenario, travel bag in another one, and again another, if you look into it, here is the variance of the duties. What if you levied 2.7% instead of 9.7%? You are non-compliant. What if you levied 9.7% instead of 2.7%? You are losing money equally. So in either the ways, there is no joy, right? It's, it's the only joy is, you know, in determining it accurate. So this is a survey which we did. I'll tell you these are interesting, interesting observations we had. So we, there are various parameters like physical presence in US, transaction volume, value, even your marketplace, the kind of marketplace sales which you do in also determine your, your kind of you know, compliance requirements in the US. And of course, even if you do remote, I am selling it from India, but still, if you cross a particular threshold in the US, $100,000, you are definitely subjected for nexus registrations, and then you need to get your sales tax registrations, and et cetera. Remote employees. I have an employee sitting out in California working from home, so we don't really uh, have any kind of you know, registration, et cetera, or in, in Texas, where we just pay them the salary, but still, you are obliged to get yourself registered in the United States, Texas. Business visits. Attending a conference like this in Texas can attract uh, a notice for your company from the Texas state government saying your members have visited this event, so you need to get a sales tax registration because you are triggering physical nexus. You might be wondering how would they know? So let me also ask this question. Whenever you take a flight from Mumbai to Delhi, you land in Delhi and you turn on your phone, the first message you will receive is not from your family saying like, did you, how was your flight? or from your client who asks you, and how's your flight? But you'll get a welcome message from Airtel saying like, thank you very much and welcome to Airtel Delhi. So they clearly know where we are. So it's as simple as that. So everyone in every part of the world, we are, that's a side effect of technology, I would still call in. Like, you know, we, they get to know where we are and what we do and et cetera. So from an Indian exporter standpoint, so we literally stack them into five categories. 50% of them, they trust God. They say, I keep trust in God. I'll go. When I come, I'll see. 
20% they receive a notice and they say, is this true God? This comes now, the, the complexity is increasing from a notice perspective is, oh my God. And the final thing, which is the common thing which we see, it, kuch ho sakta hai kya? So which is a very natural question which we have in India, that is a similar question which we also use in the US. And final 10% is, help me God. And this is not an exaggeration, ladies and gentlemen. A retailer selling on Amazon in United States. He was just storing his entire stock in the state of Philadelphia. He was, he was not cognizant about the kind of rules, regulations, etc. But after a couple of years, the State Department of Tax from the Philadelphia government slammed him a notice of around one million US dollars. And this is a real fact. It's not an exaggeration. So the regulation which is really affecting the cross-border strategies, one is the restrictions and the prohibitions, the negative list is being updated as we speak. And thanks to the Indian government, they are trying to do a lot of free trade agreements with uh, governments like Japan and even with UK, which is still in, in abeyance for quite long and hopefully we are expecting that to be, go through, etc. And where kind of you know, trade treaties are going to give you a little bit more of an oxygen and a leverage to encourage your cross-border trade. So you might be wondering, like, you know, where is technology in this entire space? So one single thing is, you know, is it humanly possible to keep a track of all of your 122,000 tax changes? And the HS codes updating every day in, day out, you might be selling it to the multiple countries and etc. It's humanly impossible. Tracking 4,500 notices from GST itself is a, is a pain-taking affair. We are talking about thousands of changes day in, day out. So that's a point where technology can be a lever where CFOs can utilize for optimizing their performance because this is what we as an organization believe. So we believe that technology can not just help you in solving the complex tax com uh, compliance problems, but it will definitely help the CFO to be a, a strategic driver for the organization. Because often CFOs are, are, they are not just the monitors of the cost and the return on investment, but they are the person who would really decide should the company expand into this, into this country or into this geography or not. So that is possible when you have a great technology tool at your disposal. So this is what we looked at from a government standpoint where the regulatory compliance picking up, marketplaces really picking up, and the cross-border kind of, you know, um, regulations and the updates happening across the globe in every day and every moment as we see in the business. So virtual audits, the state governments in the US and the EU authorities have started uh, rigorous audits for the shipments which are happening because they have a window of around eight years. So please be on a watch for that aspect of it. Even if you do a transaction today, it can haunt you for the next eight years. And they have their window of eight years whenever they are gonna slam a notice and come back to you. And the invoicing is going to be a game changer. And this kind of you know, updates which we are talking about, a country like Italy, which is a quite a small country, right? But Italian authorities are even trying to manually approve some of the invoices for a, a class of the products. So imagine that every of your transaction is now under the scanner. iOS is a ship, uh, shipment kind of a system, which is going to help you if you have an iOS number registered on your, uh, on your shipment, which is therein you will have a green channel clearance. So there is no lag. But if you don't even have an IOSS number, you need to pay the kind of you know, import duty and the destination-based tax before your shipment is even cleared. So electronic tax file sharings and e-reporting, e-invoicing are, are now the reality part of it. It is a part of your trade. So that will welcome you to the world of tax complexity. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the discussion, and you know, probably if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take it.